a powerful CMS and uh, <clears throat> it provides all kinds of ways to customize the front end. But the theming layer in Drupal is uh, somewhat difficult to wrangle with. On the other hand, Svelte provides a beautiful uh, and easy to use way to produce JavaScript uh, user interfaces. So when you combine Svelte with Drupal, you get uh, the best of CMS and the best of the user experience. But in order to combine those two, you may have to add Sapper to the mix and GraphQL. So today, let's take a look at how we can make that happen. First of all, why would you want to do this? The first is performance, because with the with JavaScript UI, you get a uh, you get better performance, and you're not getting Drupal to produce the entire page. You get better user experience uh, because the user interface is on the browser. You get better productivity because you're using CMS for content and JavaScript for front end, uh, best tool for the best job, for the right job. And it's easier to customize because now uh, you're producing, uh, your front end is written in HTML, JavaScript, CSS as opposed to Drupal's theming layer. And then overall, uh, it's very likely that you know, the end solution will be more secure with a smaller attack surface. So let's see what are the components. You will use uh, Drupal 8 for content management, GraphQL module of Drupal for querying the data or the content, uh, retrieving the content, Sapper for uh, Node.js server that produces uh, both server-side rendering of Svelte as well as client-side. And of course, Svelte for the JavaScript UI. Again, this will run generally on the browser, but it can also be generated on the server. That helps with uh, SEO and um, search engines. What are the steps? So what we are going to do is we are going to set up Drupal, add GraphQL module to Drupal, we will have to enable course, which is co cross origin resource sharing, uh, which we will do through services.yaml, making some changes in there. Uh, the reason why we need course is because our uh, Node.js server is and our Svelte UI is being served from localhost 3000 or some place on the internet, which is different from where our Drupal mm, content is being served. So because these are two different origins, that's why we have to enable cross-origin resource sharing. Then we will set permissions in GraphQL module so that uh, anonymous users can query uh, GraphQL. Uh, we will create a Sapper application uh, that creates some routes uh, for articles and uh, article listings. So we, so those are the routes, slash article and slash article slash, whatever the slug for the article might be. And then finally, we will make GraphQL queries in preload method of uh, our Sapper pages, uh, which are .svelte files. So if you are unfamiliar with uh, many of these concepts, I have a lot of uh, videos on my channel on Drupal, on Sapper, on Svelte. So take a look at those. All right, let's get started. But before we get started, I, I just want to show you what the end product might look like. And the end product will probably be, uh, so this is our front page that I created in Sapper using Svelte. And here's our about and the articles. These are the, this content is completely coming from Drupal and it has a paginator here. You can go to the next page and next page, etc. And then when you actually click on any particular uh, article, you see that uh, the article is shown with title, the authorship information, <clears throat> uh, image, uh, the author picture. This is obviously a dummy content that I generated using Devil Generate. But here's the body, the tags on this article, the author information again. 
So all this is not being uh, generated by Drupal. Drupal is only serving the content, while Svelte pages are uh, doing the layout of this page and the rendering, etc. So let's. Uh, um, one more thing I want you might have noticed that there is uh, animations. Uh, the trans page transitions are animated. As you can see, the page is sl sliding from the bottom like this, and then sliding upward. Uh, so this is made possible once again because of uh, Sapper uh, and Svelte animations or transitions. This wouldn't be possible in a fully server rendered application. Keep in mind that what you are looking at is a single page application, SPA. Even though the URL is changing, as you can see here, this URL uh, is changing, but actually the page is not being fully re re reloaded. It is being re-rendered and the URL path uh, route changes, but but this is still a single page application. It's using the HTML5 uh, JavaScript history and push state API to change the URL path without reloading the entire page. Okay, so <clears throat> Let's see, now that we have seen what the end product is going to look like, uh, let's look at the Drupal preparatory steps. Drupal website, uh, Drupal 8. And I have, if you will see in the extend menu, I have enabled the GraphQL module here. Let me show you. So GraphQL, yep, so there it is. GraphQL module is enabled. And if I go to configuration, web services, GraphQL, as, and then in there, I also had to, oh, keep in mind, not just the, the GraphQL module, I also had to enable the second module called GraphQL core. And that GraphQL core enables a new schema called GraphQL core uh, schema, okay, a provider. And in so because of that, we can click on this explorer and now, the Explorer lets us uh, run <clears throat> all kinds of uh, uh, GraphQL queries. So here in this uh, screen, uh, if I hit play button, uh, I am running a query, which I have uh, formulated um, article node by path. And it takes the a variable called dollar $path, which is a parameter. And he here I'm providing a value for it, which is slash article slash planned it. Keep in mind that I have created a bunch of dummy content uh, using the uh, the devil generate module. So devil generate module, as you might know, uh, can help you generate uh, random, uh, you know, lura mipsum type users or vocabulary terms, taxonomy terms, or uh, articles or pages or other notes. So that's what I've done. And because of that, I can run this query. And here's the query. Uh, this is the URL alias path of that um, particular um, node. And when I pass that in, um, and this is uh, obviously a, a GraphQL query, I am unable to get into the details of the GraphQL query you would have to you can all the source code will be available along with the video so you can actually look at the source code of the query but this is the result that i receive and in this result i have all the information about the node about the taxonomy term tags that are attached to it the body uh, of the node and the summary uh, which is in process state etc and about the uh, the author the author of this node so all this information is available uh, because of GraphQL. Now there's one more step, which is enabling course. Okay, so this is this is that step, uh, enable course. Uh, that's important. And in order to do that, I have to, uh, let me just show you what I'm doing here. I am, um, this is my uh, services.yaml file in my Drupal, uh, site directory and the way I did this was I copied uh, default dot services dot yml to services dot yml and then I opened that file 
and there were a few things the course etc was disabled so i enabled uh, change it from false enable false to enable true uh, allowed headers was an empty array i added all these header names to allowed headers uh, so these are x csrf token authorization content type uh, except origin uh, x requested with and x access control allow origin these are the headers that are allowed to be uh, shared across origins uh, the methods uh, you can limit it to get or post i hmm. made it star but i think it makes sense to in production uh, it makes sense to narrow them down to the ones that you really need get post maybe uh, keep in mind graphql clients by default they use post method uh, for querying data but there is a way you can uh, use only the get method uh, which we might go to, go over um, in terms of allowed origins we have a local host as well as the site where uh, your actual graphql uh, sorry your your swelter and sapper application will be deployed uh, at this point i've left it at star uh, Again, I recommend that you narrow it down to whatever you have. The rest of them I left alone. Okay, so this is very much necessary. Without this, you will not be able to run your web, your front end of your website, which is the Svelte and Sapper application on one host while the Drupal backend running on a different host. That won't be allowed, okay? Uh, so we went over the course. Now let's go over the permission changes that I had to make. So I did have to uh, open up some permissions. Um, now, this is what you're about to see may not be the most secure uh, setup, but at this point I'm developing, so I'm not uh, so much concerned about security. So let's go to people permissions. And without this, uh, some of this stuff might not work. So if you look for GraphQL related permissions, so here's the here are two things that I did. I said uh, bypass field security and execute arbitrary GraphQL requests. I had to open up these two permissions. Without this, I was not able to make uh, GraphQL queries um, when not locked in. Now, of course, one could run those. Keep in mind that the Sapper application and the Svelte application is is not on the same server uh, in the same session as the graphql so here uh, or, or drupal so i am logged in as administrator here but when somebody is visiting my site they are running the svelte application and the sapper application which is not logged in as any user it's, it's simply an anonymous user as far as drupal is concerned so we have to give special permissions to this anonymous user. Now, in this process, I might be opening up uh, too much uh, permission, and that is something that I do need to deal with. Okay, but right now I'm just trying to demo this. So, let's keep going. So that those were the permissions. Uh, then we have to create a Sapper application, and in that Sapper application, we create routes for slash article, which is a listing of all articles, and slash article slash star, which means a spe specific URL alias or the path to a particular article, which shows the detailed view page of that article. And then finally, uh, we write the preload method in that route, in that Svelte page, um, and that preload method is going to make GraphQL queries. All right. With that, let's get started. Let's do some coding. Okay. All right, so here we are. I am going to uh, create a simple uh, Sapper application. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, dev smart. Okay, uh, I'll say npx dig it, uh, swelled js slash, uh, Sapper, uh, Sapper template, and we will use rollup branch of that template. So we will call it this. All right, now that we have uh, that project created, let's go and get this project, open this project. All 
All right, so first thing we do is npm install. And let's run this. Uh, so we could run it with npm run dev, or better yet, why don't I just run it from VS Code? So there it is, npm scripts. Uh, before I do that, let me just stop the other server that is running. Okay, so I'm back and I'm going to stop this second server. Oh, it looks like this was already running, was it? Okay, let's restart it then. I am surprised, but okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's go to home. Yeah, so this is our standard uh, Sapper application. Um, nothing new here. If you have ever written uh, or seen a Sapper application, this is what it generally looks like. Uh, uh, we are interested in this blog. This blog is actually hard coded. Uh, let's uh, rename this blog directory to article. So let's do this renaming article. And uh, oh, we go into, okay. Um, nav. So there is this nav.svelte, which is located in SRC components nav.svelte and we will change the last um, menu item from blog to article okay articles is the label but the path is article singular and yeah same change here so once you do that and in articles you will see pretty much the same thing the blog stuff and that's okay Right, uh, that's okay. Let's, let's uh, not worry about what is breaking. I think we can just restart this. Okay, uh, if I reload, it's still broken. That's all right, I just renamed everything. So it's, it's broken, not a big deal. Uh, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put some extra uh, uh, some code into it. Uh, I'm going to make some GraphQL queries, etc. So let's uh, do that. For that, I go into article. I, I can delete all this extra stuff that I don't need posts. And uh, the slug.json, yes, get rid of that. And uh, we'll keep slug.svelte. We can get rid of index.json. Uh, index.svelte we will keep, of course. All right, so here in index.svelte, we want to make uh, some changes. We are going to make to index.svelte. These are the, this is the page that uh, shows a list of articles, which of course right now is not working. So let's uh, make some changes. Before we make some changes, we need to add a couple of uh, modules node modules and those are um, npm we have to npm install apollo dash boost and graphql so graphql and apollo boost apollo is a client for graphql and uh, graphql module provides core of graphql so these two we have to add to our project so i do that once that's done we will be able to import some of it into our yeah so that's done and now uh, back here in we will gut out the preload method um, we will imp import apollo client from apollo boost so apollo boost like i said is the module and apollo client is the is the uh, client for graphql in javascript okay so we say new okay wait we can say const client is equal to new apollo 
client. An Apollo client takes a, an options object. So the options object takes two things. One is the URI of the Drupal or GraphQL server. So I have set up, I have a new file called config.js right there. So that config.js has the URL of my Drupal site. So I just say, uh, and I let me in, uh, let me import that config file. Import config from dot slash config, and now I can um, I can type config dot Drupal base URL. So that's the uh, URL of the Drupal site, and then attach slash graph. QL to it. So this is the GraphQ. So this gives me the URI uh, of the Apollo client, the server for the Apollo client. The second thing we have to provide is the fetch object. Now fetch object or fetch property, we wouldn't normally have to provide if there was a globally available fetch uh, API. Uh, it is true that the fetch API is present in browsers, but it may or may not be present in Node.js server unless you import it. Uh, we are running this in Sapper. Sapper provides that fetch API under this dot fetch in preload. Only in preload, the Node.js fetch is available as this dot fetch. So this creates us the client. Next thing we will do is uh, we will use the client to make a query. And the query uh, call takes another object that consists of query equal to some query here, which we will provide. And then the second thing it uh, takes is variables. And variables are the parameters that you can provide to the query. So we'll come to it. Uh, first, let's talk about the query. What is our, What does our query look like? So here is the query. Uh, if uh, Here's my front page query. So front page query, let me reload. Yeah, so that's my... Let me click on this again. So that's the front page query, and it has two parameters, limit and offset. If I execute this query, I get the data for front page. This, now again, uh, you can look up on the internet about uh, GraphQL, uh, learns of GraphQL, but here there is a lot of documentation available. You can, you can get the documentation by clicking on this docs. Uh, by the way, th keep in mind, this is my Drupal site and I arrive here by visiting the slash GraphQL slash Explorer. So let's take a closer look at it. Yeah, so that slash GraphQL slash Explorer um, path. And in there you have this all the documentation you need. You can control click on node query and it gives you some information about that. There's a lot of uh, auto completion available. So we can we can use auto completion um, as we are you know going through this in the entities and everything. So right here there are you know this kind of completion is available. I'm pressing control space. Okay. So once you run that you get this result. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this query, the entire query, and then I'll paste this into my, uh, just above my preload method. Uh, const query equal to, now the query yeah, uh, is not just a plain string. You cannot just put that in, this, in a string like this. See? No, that's not how it works. The way it works is you have to, import another thing called GQL tag. So, and that you put under curly braces because it's not the default export from Apollo Boost. So you import the GQL tag and, and then, so then you say const query is equal to, start with the GQL backtick and then close backtick. That's your uh, multi-line string. And in there, you paste your query. Okay, so let me um, go to the beginning. Yeah, okay. So this is my my query uh, wrapped in GQL tag. And then I make that query available here. So you can say query equal to query, 
query colon query or just say query and then in variables you can provide limit so you could say limit uh, default is 10 let's make it 20 and then offset leave it at 0 all right so once you run the query you can assign the results of the query const result equal to but you cannot just do say result equal to because this is not a synchronous call so you have to put a weight in front of it this way it uh, makes it an asynchronous thing but you cannot put a weight inside a function uh, that is not async itself so you have to declare this as async so now after result we can say return nodes equal to now it's not nodes is not equal to result it's equal to it's actually stuff inside that it's result dot data dot node query and then dot entities so let's do that result dot data dot um, node query dot entities All right so that's your nodes um, in at the bottom of the page let's replace all references to post let's rename as you know in sapper uh, preload method must result in uh, return an object and the properties of that object will be mapped into the props of the uh, component so let's start replacing posts with nodes okay and wherever it says well, this one says blog we will call this recent nodes right and then wherever it says this variable post let's rename it to node and we cannot say dot slug first of all remove this block slash prefix and then instead of dot slug we will have to say whatever it says for path alias and it is dot path dot alias so that's what we will say dot path dot alias and then node title so this is let's see if this works maybe it will work Oh, my server is not running, so let me run the server. Server started without any error, so now we can reload. It says, uh, you must wrap the query string in GQL tag. So the problem is that the variable query, which is outside the preload function, is clashing with this uh, destructured parameter called query so we have to remove this parameter completely we are not using it anyways so let's remove the preload parameters and now there you go look at those my recent nodes all the nodes are being listed that's very good uh, the these are the titles of my nodes this is just generated content dummy content and if I click on it it takes me to article slash gentius the the url alias but it's not actually working why is it not working naturally because slug dot uh, which is supposed to which is article slash slug dot svelte is not configured or is not coded correctly so in order to do that now that we got your article listing uh, working let's just copy all of this and okay before we do that let's let's remove all of this here okay everything from the script tag context module and back we let's copy the entire preload method and other stuff from index.svelte and paste that into here in slug.svelte uh, we will definitely have to replace this query so let's get rid of the query delete the query and and let's uh, get another query i have a query ready here and that is article node by path so this one this is article node by path it takes a parameter called dollar sign path and that parameter is uh, i am providing here as path is equal to slash article slash bland it so now if i run this query i get this result so this gives me all the information about this um, node it gives the title of the node of course but also the image url here are the tags and the body of the node is available under 
this thing called uh, body uh, dot processed okay so now all these th things are available let's cop copy this co uh, query and paste it right exactly here okay so that's your query and now let's come back here inside the preload method and uh, most of the things are the same except the variable is going to change we need the path path is available in the page parameter and let's we can destructure it out of the page parameter page dot path is being mapped to this path and that path uh, we can pass into this graphql query as path so so variable is path so we are passing that in now there is a what we are going to uh, retrieve is not nodes but a node a single node and that's going to be result dot data dot let's see what is it called it's called result dot sorry it's called result dot route dot entity okay so let's go back there uh, result dot data dot route dot entity which is not plural but singular okay now that i got the node let's rename my parameter from post to node and i can do the same thing let's just uh, change it everywhere uh, node 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 and node now the problem is this node dot html is not correct it should be node dot body dot uh, let me check processed i think yeah node dot body dot processed here so let's change that node dot body dot processed okay mm. let's see if this works mm. give it a try and <laughs> wow this is amazing it worked on the first try so gen that's the title and that's the body and all of that is working uh, we can try our luck and try to see if i can see the image that is attached so it's, it'll be img src and then some variable and then alt and equal to some variable let's find out what the variable is going to be let's come back here yeah, the image is pro available as field image dot url and dot alt also okay sorry over just below that here so we come back here and say node dot field image dot url as well as the next one is going to be node dot field image dot alt and that's my alt once we do those things let's save it and <laughs> look at that image is there so this works too uh, let's see if we can get tags listed unordered list of tags and in there we will um, have pound sign each node dot field tags I, I think that's what it is called let's check that there field tags node dot field tags which is an array and in there once you're inside the array you go for entity dot entity label okay so field tags as tag and then in here we uh, first let me close the each and in here i say l i tag dot entity dot entity label all right let's format save this and once you save it there you go you got a couple of tags like that so these are the two tags that were present all right so let's take a look again uh, we have this articles listing page being generated uh, using the first qu uh, query the graphql query that we wrote here and uh, the when you click on it uh, you are getting the detail page of the article that has the image the title 
image, the body. You can even get information about the author, etc. Um, so all those things are present, uh, and now you can you have a Sapper and Svelte version of your Drupal site. Um, almost most of those things are available. Now, why are we doing this? I mean, what are the benefits? Um, you know, there are many benefits, of course. If you go back to our um, why we have a better performance because you can see how, how quickly all this happens. Uh, the other thing is in the final version, let me show you the, once again, the final version of our um, site. Hold on. Uh, let me stop this one. And so if I, oops, yeah. So this is the co completed version. As you can see, uh, as I am clicking, do you see the transitions? This is possible because we have we are doing this in Svelte and Sapper. Uh, when we are clicking from page to page, this this being a single page application. Uh, it's not doing full page reload. Instead, it is doing JavaScript loading of the of the page template as well as the page data. And because of that, we are able to create these uh, beautiful transitions. When I click on uh, read more, the page slides up. I hope you are noticing that. And um, we are able to uh, look. Um, we this is the user information, the author information. Um, of course, the tags are being shown. The date, as you can see, I am using moment.js to show the date. All of this is uh, available in the source code that accompanies this uh, video. Um, so the use uh, the user experience is much better, right? And uh, we have a better performance. The loading of the pages, etc., is much better. We, and we we are more productive. As you saw me uh, creating, uh, obviously I created part, part of the page, but it took very little time for me to do that. If I can do that in real time, you can imagine in, on a real project, you're saving a lot of time. So uh, we are using Drupal for content management while we are using Svelte and Sapper, uh, which is JavaScript for uh, the front end. Uh, it, it's also very easy to customize, making changes is, is much easier. Uh, as you know, Drupal's um, theming layer is not that easy to customize. So uh, I hope uh, you got a good idea of uh, um, why we are doing it and what are the benefits. So there you go. Svelte and Sapper with Drupal 8 and GraphQL produce beautiful websites, very good performance, a good user experience, and uh, much higher developer productivity. Hope you learned something.